All right, here we go. This one's going to be a rough journey that triggers some emotional dissonance and challenges some preconceptions. But hey, that's what debunked is all about. And these things got to happen to get to the truth of a matter. So Warning. consider yourself warned. And now imagine you're out one day and you see someone dump a bunch of babies on the side of the road. Then you see a man with a hatchet. He walks over to the babies and starts, well, you get the picture. What would you do? Give him a thumbs up, take a selfie, assemble the Avengers, or try to stop the man right there on the spot? Now, with that in mind, I ask you these questions. What is the difference between that scene and the everyday scenario inside thousands of abortion clinics? What are the essential differences between what's in the mother's womb, the unborn, and what's outside the mother's womb, the born, that justifies the mass elimination of the former, but the collective protection of the latter? Well, to help you answer that, I present to you the SLED test. What's that you say? Well, it's this, I say. Does being a human being with human value and human rights have anything to do with our size, level of development, environment, or degree of dependency? Is a large middle-aged man more human than a smaller 14-year-old boy? Should a fully developed female be granted more human rights than an eight-year-old girl who is not as developed yet? Is someone more worthy of life if they live in a mansion in America and less worthy if they live in a shanty in Africa? Is it okay to eliminate a nursing boy, but not his six-year-old sister simply because the nursing boy is more dependent on his mother? No, 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 and of course, no. So then the unborn isn't any less human, void of their human value and human rights simply because of SLED, right? So now what? Well, some claim it's in the science, man. Just follow the science, they say. But when we do, it's clear from the earliest stages of development, the unborn are distinct, living, and whole human beings. In fact, the scientific evidence has been so clear for so long that even way back in 1981, a U.S. Senate report stated this. Physicians, biologists, and other scientists agree that conception marks the beginning of the life of a human being, a being that is alive and part of the human species. There is overwhelming agreement on this point in countless medical, biological, and scientific writings. Okay, now fast forward a few decades. High-res photos, 3D scans, and brilliantly detailed ultrasound help us see with our own eyes what's in a human being's womb. And guess what? It's a human being. Wow. What else would it be? A piano? A whale shark? Just common sense. So now what? Well... There are those who actually know it's a human being. It's implicit in their language, but they use emotional appeals like, he's a financial burden. I don't want it. It's an emotional drain. It's not my fault. I'm not ready. It's not fair. She'll stop my professional progress. It'll get in the way of my desires and dreams. It's cruel for an unwanted child to be in this world. The child would be a product of incest. I can do whatever I want with my child. Okay. Can you use any of those to justify the killing of the born? No. No. So then why the unborn? Look, enough is enough. This topic might be psychologically complex, but it's certainly not morally complex. We all understand that how you feel doesn't justify what you do or get to do. I mean, think about it. Uh, Your Honor, uh, the reason I ran over those people is because they're an emotional drain. Officer, I, I know I killed those people, but if I didn't, it would have stopped my professional progress. And now, allow me to add this for good measure. When it comes to the possibility of actually hurting or killing a human being, shouldn't we err on the side of precaution? I mean, most of you wouldn't run over a box in the middle of the road if for a second you thought there might be a puppy or a kitten in it, right? But why not go to the same lengths to save and protect human babies? Just asking. Bottom line, human beings, all human beings, from the moment of conception, have value simply because they are human beings made in the image of God, period. Psalm 139.13 declares that God needed you together in your mother's womb. So precious is life that God commands us not to murder, but instead tells us to love one another and do nothing out of selfish ambition. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves. The minute we think we are more valuable than others for any reason is the minute we think others are less valuable. And that line of thinking is the root of racism, sexism, massacres, school shootings, bullying, hatred, and all kinds of other injustices that most of us rightfully stand against because we don't want human beings to be hurt or mistreated. And that should go for the unborn too. So this idea that the unborn are less human than the born and that it's okay to eliminate them has been debunked. Adios. <laughs>